thanks. I, I wasn't raised in church. I mean, I knew I knew Christians, <clears throat> but I, yeah, I, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. Um, I had grandparents who were Christians. I had other relatives who were Christians. But by probably around the age of nine, I was an atheist. Um, certainly, I remember talking with my mom at that time and saying, I don't believe in life after death. And um, we had an interesting conversation at that point because I don't think she did either. And when I when I was about 13, to skip ahead a bit, I started reading Plato, and Plato got me thinking about life after death. Not that his arguments were all that persuasive, like the pre-existence of the soul. I was like, eh, I don't think that happened to me. Um, <clears throat> so I wasn't persuaded by his arguments, but it really got me thinking about what life was really about. It was, if, if it was just this finite segment it seemed to be virtually meaningless in, in light of eternity. And I started thinking, <clears throat> you know, the only way that we could have an infinite life would be if we were plugged into something or somebody that was infinite that could guarantee that. And <clears throat> that would also have to be something that even though it or he or she or whatever was infinite, cared about us. And why would it care about us? We were finite. And if it cared about us because because it was loving, well, I, I, I knew I wasn't loving. I, <laughs> I just wanted to keep existing. So I was, yeah, the Bible says that a person by... Um, striving with their intellect can't can't find God that way. There was enough there to let me know that um, that would be this you know a God would be the solution if there was a solution. But I didn't I couldn't find God that way. But finally, even though I was an atheist, I started I started saying, God, if you're out there, or a God or whatever, if you're out there, please show me. But I didn't know if anything could happen. And <clears throat> one day, I ran into a couple Christians on the street who stopped me and began telling me about how I could have eternal life if I believed in Jesus, that he died for me and rose again. I argued with them for 45 minutes because, <clears throat> I mean, they were showing me from the Bible, and I'm like, I don't believe in the Bible. <clears throat> I'm an atheist. Can you give me anything anything else to convince me? I mean, it wasn't like a hard-nosed atheist. Like, Well, I guess it sort of was hard-nosed. I made fun of Christians. But I wasn't so hard-nosed that I wasn't willing to be persuaded if somebody could give me evidence. But they weren't giving me evidence. Well, I thought they weren't giving me evidence. So finally I said, if there's a God, how did the dinosaur bones get there? You ask a stupid question, you get a stupid answer. They say, oh, put there. Well, ah, I said, okay, uh, you guys, I, I can't take this. I'm leaving. This is this is crazy. So I, I turned around to leave. Um, what they said to me at that point wasn't very pleasant. Uh, this is not the normal way that we recommend doing evangelism. But, you know, if if they were led by the Spirit specifically, I don't know. But, but they didn't know paleontology. They didn't know too much about apologetics, but they were the only people in the street who were sharing their faith. Sure. I mean, I, I knew Christians who didn't share their faith with me. Right. And so some of them tried, actually. I shut them down. But anyway, so I'm I'm walking home. I've studied different religions. I've made fun of, well, mainly I just made fun of Christians because it seemed like the dominant belief in the U.S., but it seemed to me like the Christians didn't really take it seriously. They mm -hmm. they didn't live like they believed God was their, their maker. I was like, if I ever believed there was a God, I'd give God everything right. because that would be what I was made for. So 
but as I was walking home, this was different from everything I'd studied, from the conversations I'd had. I felt God's presence, the presence of someone that I hadn't acknowledged. <laughs> and I got to, to my room, and I was going back and forth in my heart, but finally I'm like, all right, God, I can't deny that you're right here in the room with me. This isn't something that is going to persuade other people who will say, well, this was just subjective. Right. But because I was in myself, I experienced this. So for me, it was like a reality. In any case, so I can't like communicate that necessarily by telling sure. somebody about yeah. it. I, it was so real, just as real as... I mean, as real as anybody talking to me, God's presence was in the room with me. And he wasn't going to let me alone until I either accepted or rejected. And, you know, this is what I wanted if it was true. Mm -hmm. So I said, God, I don't understand how Jesus dying for me and rising from the dead can save me. But if that's what you say, I'll believe it. But God, I don't know how to be saved. So if you want to save me, you're going to have to do it yourself. And all of a sudden, I felt something rushing through my body like I'd never felt before. I jumped up. Just I had no idea what was happening to me, except, well, I decided I'd always said if I ever found out there was a God, I was going to serve him. So now I found out, and now I was going to serve him. But I must tell you, little kids in Sunday school, I, I, I ended up going to a nearby church that, that Sunday. Um, didn't know when the service started. Got there too early, then came back. Was too late. Well, not too late to get there, but I was walking uh, in after it started. Yeah. But the little kids in Sunday school, they knew more about the Bible than I did. I didn't know anything. And so I had to really start cramming to catch up. And if you read 40 chapters of the Bible a day, you can get through the New Testament every week or through the Bible every month. And that was, yeah, I did, I did that for some time, uh, trying to, trying to catch up. 